Okay, so following a quick back and forth with Glenn Barrington on uh, the ACDC forums, I just thought I would post to demonstrate with a bit of commentary my processing technique for portrait and for particularly taking out the bloodshot red lines in somebody's eyes. Which that I shot a while ago in RAW. Um, this is it within the develop tool within uh, ACDC. I've made the general adjustments that I really care about for this particular image. Um, just so you can see there's a final there's a final copy of the image on my website. And you can see the eyes are nice and clear and white, but on the original you'll see that they are quite heavily bloodshot. There's a photo I did it with quite a long time ago, but um, I remember the having a particular high level of bloodshot to the eyes. Um, you notice also that line there and the slight haze to the, to the iris, that's because the model is wearing contact lenses and I did fix that in post-production as well. I um, don't know whether I'll show you how to do that again or not. We shall see if the video goes on. Um, you see I cleared that up again entirely within the ACDC. So we've done everything we can at this stage within develop. So just move straight over to edit and my first move always in edit and ACDC is duplicate layer to cover myself so what we want to do first of all is select the whites of the eyes lots of different methods you can use to do that I tend these days to choose the uh, magic brush tool um, Tolerance normally around 75. Record, there we go. Um, a little bit of feather, only about 10, just to take the edge off. Uh, I'll just use my scroll wheel to control the size of the tool. You don't want to get absolutely everything within the eye. You don't want to go right into these pink corners, you want to stick to the white eyeball. The magic brush tool does generally do quite a good job of making the selection, um, but obviously you want to include the the veins of the eye, so you do have to mess around with the tolerance quite a bit to get where you want to. So really quick selection. If this was going to be a final image that I was going to use somewhere, I might have spent a bit more time than I am. So just using the left button to select and then the right button to deselect. I often find with the magic brush tool the actual process of deselecting and refining the edges is more useful than the process of selecting so sometimes I'll often go over the edge initially and I'll refine the edge from the other side. Uh, I have no idea why that works but in my experience rated AC which isn't that great. I haven't been using the software that long maybe eight months um, and only really getting into using the edit module recently that tends to be the case and ultimate 10 with this brush tool has only been out since September 2016 we're now in February 2017 so I think I've had about two months or so so that's the right eye camera right anyway and then we look at the, the left eye so you notice that it's catching some of the veins here going over it we can normally pick it up uh, as a portrait photographer the eyes really are what matters people look at photos longer if the eyes are looking at camera people look at their own eyes in photos and any lack of clarity in the eyes makes people dislike a photo more than anything else. They may not know why they dislike it, but in my experience it is pretty much always because of a lack of clarity in the eyes. So a bit of a mess of that, so we just deselect and reselect. And same with the iris, only pushing too close. Better to fall. There we go. Right, these eyes again are particularly awkward because you've got this little haze around the edge of the iris and that is down to contact lenses.
so we selected the eyes or well, the whites of the eyes so ACDC always save that selection because unlike other tools you are going to have to continually reload it as you can see I use the term white an awful lot a bug in ACDC is sometimes it forgets your previous selections from other images sometimes it remembers and there seems to be no rhyme or reason to what it remembers and what it doesn't so, so we've got the the eye selected so the first step is to create a light EQ adjustment layer you could use an exposure compensation layer as well but I tend to find that the light EQ does a slightly better job so go back out it's always worth viewing the image like this to try and not overdo it you don't want to end up with an eye that's totally blown out to the point that you can see all the roughness of the edges we raise the brightness up a little bit this does unfortunately tend to re-emphasize the red line so you can see the effect of that I'm not aiming for perfection here just a demo of how I do things so we'll go back to the layer select load the selection um, I believe I call it white uh, it's easy to see has to choose the wrong one because of the uh, marching ants so a new adjustment there uh, this time color EQ will try and reduce the impact of the red lines 50% crop and we should be able to see both eyes so there we can see right so first of all we'll desaturate the reds we take it all the way down we start to lose a lot of tone so you do want to sleep just that little bit because what the aim is for me personally is not to end up with flat white eyes you often see in some quite high-end photography that basically it looks as though there is no three-dimensional quality to the eye at all so there we go you see it's starting to the effect that you start to get is that way you reduce the saturation you start to get a graying of the veins so another thing to do is increase the brightness of the reds or any other colors that you think might be impacting so let me try to have a reality check and see if you think that it looks OTT before after so we are starting to push the limits a little bit there I think this is starting to become just a little bit too white a little bit too painted looking Take the vibrance back a little bit and you can regain a little bit of the texture but you'll see you've got patches where the desaturation and the brightening have been just a little bit too much but there we go so before and after go back to the full view to show you what it really looks like there we go you can see our eyes are starting to come together I wish I'd trimmed off the selection. But <coughs> there's one little, a lot of people would leave it at that, but there is one little extra thing that I sometimes do. Sometimes, most of the time, I do this. So we go back and we reload the selection. And then I'm going to choose a noise reduction layer. I've found since using the ACDC that the noise reduction layer can be used to solve an awful lot of problems. And one of them is the green in the eyes. I'm trying to get this to avoid both eyes. There we go. So. <coughs> We need to adjust the luminance on the noise reduction layer. And you see those grey lines start to disappear. I find that the noise reduction in ACDC is quite like a sophisticated blur tool. So there we can see that we've lost most of the green. Um, I tend to leave just a little bit, you can see a little trace of it there, a little bit there, a little bit there, just because it helps to, in full view, to make the eye look more realistic. 
So there we go. See the difference before noise reduction, with noise reduction. It doesn't seem to make any difference in ACDC what all your layers are stacked in. Go back to the full view. So there we go. With noise reduction, without noise reduction. With noise reduction only. I say in ACDC doesn't seem to make the slightest difference what order the layers are stacked in, which I find quite unusual having come from other tools. That just happens to be the order I tend to use them in. So now it's simply the same as a JPEG to use. 